It is curious to observe how the South Korea became a reference not only in technology and pop culture, but also in something that few expected, the height of Koreans. Yes, young South Koreans are among the tallest in Asia, even surpassing their own grandparents by several centimeters. This is no coincidence. It is a direct reflection of profound transformations that have occurred in the country in recent decades, showing that the human body responds to the environment more quickly than many imagine. Imagine a young man from Seoul, who is six feet tall, standing next to his grandfather, who is barely five feet four inches tall. The contrast goes beyond physical appearance. It reveals a historical, nutritional, and social leap. Korean men, especially the youngest, today occupy prominent positions among the highest on the continent, and this has much more to do with society's choices than with genetics alone. Structural changes shape even what we think is immutable. This transformation is not limited to statistical data. It is visible in school hallways, on social media, on fashion catwalks, and even in military enlistments. Height of Koreans became a reason for world curiosity, and it is not uncommon to see foreigners surprised to see how much the new generation has grown, literally. Many even wonder, what is in the water, Korea? But the answer goes beyond the glass. The truth is, if you understand how this physical growth happened, you'll realize that the same principle can be applied anywhere in the world. It's like planting in fertile soil, with the right ingredients, the body responds. And that's where something essential to this height jump among Koreans comes in, an element that many overlook, but which is directly linked to our next point. If there is something that transformed the height of Koreans in recent decades, it was the silent revolution that began in the kitchen. The food in South Korea, previously based almost exclusively on rice, vegetables, and light soups, took on a new look in the 1960s. With the economic opening and the advancement of the food industry, Koreans' tables began to include more proteins of animal origin, such as beef, pork, chicken, milk, and eggs, items previously considered almost luxurious. Today, it's not uncommon to see a Korean breakfast filled with boiled eggs, grilled tofu, seaweed, and even steak. For those who grew up in times of scarcity, like the grandparents of the current generation, this seems like a feast. But this abundance didn't come out of nowhere. It was the result of public policies, school nutrition campaigns, and the population's increasing access to varied foods rich in nutrients essential for growth. The difference? It's literally extra centimeters. Want to see this in practice? Visit a Korean school. Lunches are designed by nutritionists and balanced with brown rice, vegetables, meat, and fruit. It's not just food, it's a national growth strategy. And this careful eating has a direct impact on the physical development of children, who grow up healthier, taller, and more prepared for the future. This explains why Korean men today are so different, in stature and vigor, from those of two generations ago. That's where the curiosity becomes a reflection. What if changing eating habits was the secret behind so many visible transformations? What does South Korea shows us that? Yes, what we put on our plates can shape even what we see in the mirror. But to understand why it wasn't always like this, we need to look at the turbulent past that the country faced, a time when growing up was a daily challenge. Before the economic rise and K-dramas exported around the world, the reality of South Korea, it was very different. The Korean War, fought between 1950 and 1953, left the country in ruins. The population lived with the bare minimum, and that included food. Thousands of children grew up in the midst of hunger, with diets extremely poor in nutrients, which directly impacted their height of Koreans of that generation. When the body must choose between survival and growth, the choice is obvious. Think of a South Korean boy in the 1950s, malnourished, with limited access to clean water and no guarantee of a full meal each day. He didn't have the breakfast eggs that are now commonplace, nor the supplements or vitamins distributed in schools. The result was clear, adults with short stature, fragile bones, and compromised health. This explains why the grandparents of today's generation of Korean men are considerably lower. This difference became even more evident when, decades later, generations born in times of peace began to emerge, with access to varied food and the public health system. The leap in hate of Koreans has become a symbol of collective overcoming. The same people who once fought for a handful of rice now compete in the Olympics and lead health and education rankings. 
It is like watching a phoenix being reborn, inch by inch. But this turning point did not come with the end of the war alone. Something greater was needed, a national commitment to reconstruction and care. And it is precisely on this pillar, investment in health and well-being, that the next chapter of this astonishing transformation that the Korea lived in recent decades. Few imagine, but the secret behind the accelerated growth of height of Koreans it's not just what you eat, but also what you breathe, drink, and access. The South Korea, in recent decades, has made massive investments in public health and sanitation, mass vaccination programs, infectious disease control, and regular medical checkups have become routine, especially among children. This has created an ideal environment for physical development. It is no exaggeration to say that a simple tap with clean water can change the destiny of a country. When hygiene improves, infections decrease. And when the body is not constantly fighting off diseases, it can focus on growing. That is why many experts point to Korea's sanitation structure as one of the pillars of the leap forward in hate of Korean men, something that, at first glance, doesn't even cross most people's minds. Today, Korean families have easy access to checkups, school dentists, and preventive exams from the earliest years of life. This guarantees not only more years of life, but much better quality during that time. It's like building a house. With a strong foundation, everything that comes after tends to be more solid. This is why young people in South Korea, they don't just live longer, they live taller, stronger, and healthier. But this care does not stop at the hospital or health center. It extends to everyday life, to the way society thinks about the body and well-being. The curiosity grows. How to keep this new generation healthy for longer? And this is where a new factor comes in which goes far beyond medicine or medicine. It is a lifestyle built with intention and discipline. Already South Korea, taking care of your body has become much more than an individual choice. It has become a social value. It is common to see parks full of elderly people stretching at dawn, young people going to the gym before class, and even companies offering breaks for workplace exercise. The search for well-being has become an essential part of our routine, and this directly influences our health Yes, our height of Koreans. A well-cared-for body grows better, lives longer, and gets sick less. The curious thing is that even the concept of beauty in Korea is linked to physical vitality. It is not just about having a harmonious face, but about looking healthy and vigorous. Korean men, for example, have invested more in balanced nutrition, collagen supplements, and functional training. It's not uncommon to see groups of friends exchanging tips about vitamins and proteins at dinner, as if they were talking about football. Self-care became bar talk. If you're thinking about implementing this into your daily life, start with small actions. Walking for 30 minutes a day, swapping processed snacks for fresh fruit, or adding more protein to your meals. Another simple Korean tip? Drinking green tea after meals. It aids digestion and provides powerful antioxidants. This type of habit repeated consistently, can transform your body in just a few years, just as it transformed an entire nation. And of course, this zeal for the body also strengthened another sector that grew along with national self-esteem, plastic surgery. After all, when the body becomes a symbol of success, many wonder what else they can improve to fit this ideal. And it is exactly this silent and growing aesthetic pressure that we are going to explore now. Already South Korea, Appearance is not just a matter of vanity, it is a social requirement. The current beauty standard imposes almost unattainable goals, and this starts from an early age. Having flawless skin, a thin nose, a delicate chin and big eyes is not just a personal desire. It is often a requirement of the job market and even social relations. The consequence? The plastic surgery has become a common graduation or birthday gift, especially among young people. It is no exaggeration to say that Seoul is the cosmetic surgery capital of the world. Clinics are everywhere, with huge lines and seasonal promotions. The height of Koreans, although natural in most cases, also came to be influenced by this culture. Shoes with internal heels, elevated insoles, and even bone lengthening procedures, yes, that exists, are sought after by those who want to achieve the ideal standard that society so exalts mainly among Korean men, where height mixes with status. This phenomenon creates a dual feeling. On the one hand, there is a legitimate desire to improve self-esteem. On the other, 
there is a collective pressure that can be cruel. Many young Koreans feel that if they don't fit into this mold, they will be left behind. This generates a silent wave of insecurity, even among those who, in the eyes of others, already seem perfect. What should be a choice becomes almost an obligation. And here comes the big one curiosity. If so many are seeking aesthetic perfection, does this really have to do with genetics, or are there other factors at play? After all, behind every inch of growth is a powerful combination of biology, emotions, and environment. And it is this invisible and surprising mixture that we will delve into next. For a long time, it was believed that the height of Koreans it was just a matter of genetic inheritance. If the parents were short, the children would be too, simple as that. But the South Korea proved that this idea does not hold up in the face of a transformative environment. When food, health, education, and even emotions are in balance, the body responds in surprising ways. DNA may even provide the mold, but it is the environment that fine-tunes the details. Imagine two children with similar genetics. One lives in a poor country, without access to proteins, vaccines, or treated water. The other grows in Korea, with an equipped public school, balanced meals, and constant medical monitoring. In 15 years, the difference between the two will be stark, not only in height, but also in energy, confidence, and worldview. It's like comparing a plant left in the sun with one forgotten in the shade. Today, the Korean men young people walk with a straight posture, broad shoulders, and an imposing presence. But this didn't come from scratch. It came from well-structured public policies, the appreciation of health, and a lifestyle increasingly focused on well-being. The height of Koreans, therefore, is not a genetic miracle, but the result of a fertile environment designed for human growth in all senses, physical, mental, and social. And if this is possible in South Korea, what prevents other countries from following a similar path? The answer is closer than it seems, and it starts with a change in mindset, not biology. And perhaps this is the greatest lesson of all, which gains even more strength when we broaden the lens and look at the entire world. A South Korea gives us more than a regional example. It shows a social and biological experiment in real time. In just three generations, the transformation was so radical that it became a case study in universities around the world. The height of Koreans, which grew up alongside the country, proves that structural changes, such as adequate nutrition, quality education, and effective public policies, can literally shape bodies. This is not only inspiring, it is revolutionary. The big on a curiosity, the question is, if Korea did it, why can't other countries? The answer lies in collective commitment and a long-term vision. Many places still treat health, food, and sanitation as expenses, not investments. South Korea did the opposite. She planted, watered, and now reaps visible fruits in the streets, stadiums, and classrooms. The growth was not just economic, it was human. What's more, this also redefines our view of beauty, performance, and even self-esteem. When the environment is favorable, the individual thrives in all areas. Therefore, the Korean case should not only be admired, but understood and, when possible, replicated. If there's a takeaway here, it's that the human body has incredible potential and that it flourishes when it encounters the right conditions, like a seed that only needs fertile soil. Now, it is up to us to look at our own environment, our habits and daily decisions. What are we doing today that could affect not only our health, but also that of future generations? Because, in the end, the body is just a reflection of the story we are writing. And that is precisely where the introduction of our own transformation begins.